Let's start the recording. Okay. All right, welcome to this um, introduction class to essential oils. Um, I am so excited that you are here today. Um, I've been working on this presentation all day long and it kind of feels like I'm inviting you into my living room and I kind of wish you were here in my living room because then I could actually rub some oils onto you, but I think this will be um, a good way to get, get started and get some, some information and spike your curiosity and maybe you already have some oils, so you might want to um, grab them and just, um, yeah, as we go along, maybe use them where you um, find good use for them. So some of the things we'll go over today um, First of all, why are you here? I'm really curious to, um, to kind of know what you want to learn. So I would like to ask you to maybe just grab a piece of paper or your journal or something. You might actually want to add a date so that you can come back later to some of the things you're writing down just to kind of keep score on how you're feeling right now compared to maybe if you check in a week from now or a month from now, um, just as you start to implement some of these uh, things we're talking about today. Um, furthermore, we'll be talking about who I am and why I am so passionate about holistic health and essential oils. Um, what are these essential oils that we hear about so often? How can we safely use them and apply them? Um, what is the difference with the brand of oils that we're talking about today, so doTERRA oils? Why are they so powerful and why are they the only brand that I work with? Um, we're going to talk about the top 10 most popular oils. So basically, um, a collection of oils that a lot of people will start out with just to um, start to replace some of the things that we're, they're cleaning with in their houses or um, some, some medication that they're using for pain and inflammation, um, some support when it comes to like flu or um, what have you, just for daily use. Um, we're going to talk a bit about sourcing, so where the oils come from and how uh, doTERRA gives back to um, to farmers and growers globally. We're not really going to get into oils and emotions too much. I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I think we should keep that topic for uh, a future call. And then we'll talk shortly about how you can get your hands on these oils. Um, I'll share some resources and we can do a little bit of a Q&A at the end if there's time. So... Let's start out, first of all, by grabbing a piece of paper and just answering the next couple of questions. So first of all, I'm really curious to see if you consider yourself to be a healthy person. And when we're talking about health, I think we can have a lot of different um, ideas of what health means to us. But I don't just mean health in the sense of um, being able to get out of your bed in the morning or kind of feel slightly motivated to get out of your bed in the morning, but really look at different areas of your life. So like, do you have the mental capacity to bounce back when something comes at you? Do you have that stability within yourself? Do you have a, um, some kind of spiritual connection? Do you feel there's some guidance or support that you can um, rely on or tap into? What is your um, relationship like with, with other people? So all of those components, I would say, the way you take care of yourself and the way you allow for other people to take care of you um, would tie into um, whether or not you find yourself to be a healthy person. Let's see, I think there's someone here that I might have to mute for a second. Hold on. Um. Yeah, let's mute you. All right. So once you've written down, if you consider yourself to be a healthy person, then I'd like for you to just write down for yourself, what is the reason that you showed up for this call today? So what are your top two or three reasons for wanting to learn more about essential oils? And this could be very uh, broad. I mean, there's, there are so many ways that we can use essential oils and we'll get into them. But what was it that, that spiked your initial curiosity to be here today? And then as a third question, 
what is something that you're hoping to learn from this webinar? Just to kind of um, see for yourself, um, yeah, what, what would be a good takeaway for yourself to, to find some empowerment for yourself or your family, uh, whether it is during this call or maybe we'll uh, connect on a one-on-one -on -one wellness consult after this call. So just take a moment to write these things down. All right, so who am I? I think most of you that are on this call today um, already know me pretty well, and I'm super excited for you to be, be here. Like, it's so nice to have your support and your presence, so thank you. Um, for people that are new to me and people that will be listening to this recording that might have never met me or have heard about me, I'll just share very shortly about myself because there's a lot of information I'd like to get through today. Um, so my name is Saar Groleman. I was uh, born and raised in the Netherlands and left about seven years ago to um, seek some answers that I did not feel I was able to find in my home country. So I was um, suffering from anorexia, so a pretty severe eating disorder and was very depressed. And I did not feel that I could really be myself or get through these issues um, in the Netherlands. So I decided to go travel and explore to see if there might be other ways for me to learn how to be. So I ended up going to Asia and first of all, ended up in a temple to learn how to meditate for 21 days, which was kind of crazy, but somehow I survived that. And it, um, I did not only survive it, I thrived through it. I really found some uh, new skills and answers for myself. And there was a turning point while I was there um, in the temple where all of a sudden I could, I could really feel from the inside out all these things that people had, had said to me and shared with me. Um, I could really feel that I have a lot to offer and that there's a lot um, to enjoy about life that I wasn't really connecting with. So after my time in the temple, I, I really started to see the world a lot differently. It wasn't like my my issues were completely vanished or something like that, but I just felt a lot more capable and a lot more um, stable within myself. So I started to travel around Asia more and started to practice yoga and to um, really kind of fine tune my, my diet to see how it would feel to eat a more whole food based diet. Um, I had been vegetarian for a long time, so I was curious to see what it would be like to be vegan and through that shift, I, um, I would say I kind of experienced like a green recovery. I was starting to feel a lot better about the food that I was using to nourish myself. Um, and I was noticing through the practice of yoga and meditation that I wanted to take better care of myself. So it started to become this, um, this more holistic way of living. And it really fueled me to want to not only help myself in that way and learn a lot more as I still am learning so much about myself, but also really trying to find ways to help other people that are suffering with mental, mental health issues and eating disorders. So while I was in Asia, I fell in love with um, a boy who was living and studying in Canada and decided to follow him there to see if um, our relationship would work out, which it did for a little while, for two years. And I was looking for um, ways to, to gain these, these skills and this knowledge. So I decided to go to school for holistic nutrition um, in Ontario. So I became a certified nutritional practitioner while I was there, which was amazing. And it was really so much of a journey to really learn so much more about myself and then later to learn how to apply it to clients. But first of all, really to find all these different pieces and to learn how to work with like energy medicine and a lot more the psychology of disease and, and uh, topics like that. So after that, I got really keen to um, learn more about yoga and dive deeper. So I did several uh, trainings for yoga, um, traveled back to Asia to do some trainings, did some trainings out in Canada as well, and um, moved from Ontario to Vancouver, which I love. And 
feels a lot like home for me. So I spent the last two years over there before returning to the Netherlands um, last September. And while I was out there, I was trying to find my way over there and feeling kind of uprooted and ungrounded and got in touch with doTERRA essential oils. So I had heard of them um, through different people, but I hadn't really experienced them, but I'd always been curious. And I felt like it was kind of like, I didn't find that, but that they came, they came to find me. So they kind of chased me around the world until they had me. And throughout the offerings that I was trying to birth into the world, I was feeling very insecure and the oils were helping me to bring everything together. So I could use them with my nutrition clients or I could bring them into my yoga teacher, my, my yoga um, classes. I was doing a lot of restorative and yin classes. So it was so nice to see people relax more as I would rub oils on them in Shavasana and things like that. And that's, that's kind of been my journey more and more that I dove really deep into learning more about aromatherapy and all the different ways that we're able to use these oils. And now that I'm back in Europe and I don't have this whole issue with um, immigration in Canada, I can really freely start to um, build my business with essential oils. So that is what I'm currently doing. And that's, one of my biggest passions so it's it's such a delight to start to offer classes and all that so that's that's a little bit about me i'm really focusing on and have this massive goal to use essential oils and all the other things that i have in my toolbox to help empower other people um, especially with mental health issues and eating disorders and just topics we don't generally talk about that much so let's get started with our introduction to essential oils. First of all, I just want to make clear that just because I'm saying that I really dig this holistic lifestyle, um, I'm not trying to bash or go against conventional medicine. I think there's, there's a place for it. I think there's a need for it at times. Like when I have a broken bone, I'm not just going to put some oils in it and hope for the best. <laughs> I will go see a doctor or if there's something wrong with one of my organs, I will go to the hospital. So yes, I'm grateful that it exists. Um, I do think that most often it's worthwhile to first look at natural solutions before we start using any of the synthetic remedies, so any kind of medicine. Um, I, I strongly believe in the, in the self-healing capacity of our bodies, and I find it amazing to even see the journey that my body's taken over the last, I would say, like, 10 to 15 years and how it's come from being so underweight and so out of balance to really being a lot stronger and just coming back to op optimal health. Um, so I, I think the question here is, do, do you actually know how, how good you can feel? You know, cause we all deserve to, to really feel amazing, to really feel energized and just kind of juicy and inspired and really want to, to live this life because it's it's a beautiful life but it's it's kind of short and we all have some reason some purpose that we're here and um yeah if, if we're obstructed in our in in our goals by by pain and inflammation and, and illness um or even just a, a lack of energy or indigestion um it, it doesn't have to be that way so I really hope for all of you to to find ways to improve your health and to really feel at your best. So let's let's find some ways that we can work on that. So within DoTerra, we work with um, kind of a pyramid or a wellness lifestyle. So it's really based on longevity. So often within um, modern medicine, we are very focused on symptoms and. If something arises, we'll, we'll find something to get rid of that symptom. So if there's, if there's some pain or um, what have you, something shows up and you, you try to take care of that. So we'll use some medication and we hope that that'll deal with, with the pain versus really looking at a root cause and really trying to get to an optimal state of health. So within this wellness lifestyle, it's not just focused on not experiencing pain or any kind of form of disease, but really to, to extend your life and to make sure that those years that you have are very um, just filled with health and filled with energy and joy because we, we don't want to suffer our way through our life. So 
the things that we focus on can be divided um, in healthcare and lifestyle. So like I said, there is a space for, for medical care, but we can be proactive. So we can look at, okay, there's, there's something happening. How can we make sure that we don't slip down this, this kind of slope of health and find ourselves like with some kind of neurological disorder that we might've been able to catch 10 years ago? Like how can we recognize these first signals and take active steps right now in our, in our well, in these lifestyle um, components that we can see down the dotted line? And there's also a space for informed self-care. Um, but we'll focus mainly on the lifestyle pieces here. So it's all about eating the right nutrition. And when, when we're speaking about eating right, it's not just about what we're eating, but also how we're eating it, right? So we can eat the most beautiful foods, like they're all organic, grown in your own garden, and they're picked with love. And then you are so stressed and you're just, just chomping it down so quickly and your whole body is kind of on lockdown because you're rushing and, or you're angry and you're fighting with your spouse. So you're not going to be able to really digest and absorb those nutrients, right? So it's not just about what we're eating. It's also how are we being when we're, we're um, taking in this food. Same goes for exercise. It's, it's an important part of our of our experience, but it's also something that we can stress ourselves out with. So how can we find a balance between adding in some of these weight bearing exercises, but also finding more restorative practices that we can do so we can rest and manage stress better. Um, and then a big component with these essential oils and with this lifestyle is also to reduce our toxic load. Cause we, we know that in this world, like we're constantly bombarded with, 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 chemicals that are synthetic and um, there's, there's stuff in, in the air and in the water that we might not want to ingest, but still it ends up in our system. It ends up in our tissues. We even pass it on to our children. So like through the, when the baby's in the belly and we pass it on tr through the umbilical cord. So that's kind of upsetting. So how can we help ourselves reduce these toxic loads so that we can function better and we can feel clearer so maybe you just want to um, take a look at how you rank yourself from just a great one to 10. So again, you can use your journal or the piece of paper you are using um, just to kind of rank yourself and see, okay, what am I actually doing? Can I maybe improve a bit on how I'm eating or how much I'm exercising? Or um, maybe there is some kind of concern that you would like to see a doctor about, but for some reason you haven't yet, or you feel like, it's not serious enough yet. So how can you be proactive there? So what do you rate yourself at? And then um, what is an area that you would really like to improve or that you sense some concern about that you can take um, some kind of um, step around? Okay. So let's get into the meat of it. Um, what are essential oils? So if you look at this picture, you can see this is actually a peppermint leaf. It looks really absurd when you first look at it. Um, but these little kind of beige sacs are actually the oil sacs. So essential oils are the volatile or aromatic liquids that are um, distilled from the, the seeds or the roots, the bark, um, flower, resin, stems or fruits and other parts of plants. Um, so they actually they protect the plant against environmental threats and they provide beneficial properties and the cool thing is that they can do the same for us so in addition to giving plants their distinctive smells which you might experience either just by um, rubbing like a flower or a leaf or maybe you have to tear it and you can you can smell that or when you um, I don't know, you're peeling an orange. You can, you can smell the delicious, uplifting scent and you know that that's the essential oil of the orange. So the essential oils are kind of like the blood of the plant. They are regenerating, immune strengthening, and they are the protective properties of the plants. So they help protect the plants against any uh, predators and any disease. And like I said, they can do the same for us. 
So essential oils are uh, very potent. They are a lot more concentrated than herbs, about 50 to 70 times more therapeutically, therapeutically powerful than the herbs or the plants that they were derived from. And they can affect us on a cellular level. Um, some of the essential oils can also cross the, the blood brain barrier. So they can um, really get into the brain. So this is really amazing um, when we're speaking about any kind of neurological disorders. Um, frankincense is a beautiful oil that is a great example of that, that can go straight into the, into the brain and really help to oxygenate, oxygenate um, cells there. Um, even if there's some kind of um, obstruction within the, the cell lining. So let's get a little bit deeper into this. So the constituents of the essential oils are very small in molecular size, and they are fat soluble. So this allows for many of them to easily and quickly penetrate the skin. And the fact that they are fat soluble also allows the, the oils to penetrate the cell membranes. If you have done any kind of um, biochemistry kind of um, classes in whether it's in high school or beyond, you know that our cells are made of these uh, phospholipid um, linings. So because these, these essential oils are fat soluble, they can easily move through the cell membranes. Um, like I said, even if there's any kind of issue with the cell lining, so even if they've hardened because of an oxygen deficiency, for example, they can bring back new nutrition and new oxygen into the cells. Um, the essential oils constituents also have the potential to affect every cell of the body within 20 minutes. Um, and after that, they are metab metabolized just like any other nutrients. So this is really cool. Like, let's say if you have um, knee pain on your right knee or something, you might want to experiment just to putting, put a certain oil um, on your left shoulder or use it internally and start to notice an effect after or within the 20 minutes to see if the pain starts to decrease in your knee. Um, on this picture, you can see that um, the essential oils will help to eliminate viruses and bacteria. So the bacteria reside on the outside of a cell whereas a virus is on the inside of the cell. And most of the pharmaceutical antibiotics are not able to go through the cell membrane, so they can't find any viruses. So we just have to wait it out until they get out of our system. But essential oils can actually penetrate the cell membrane and start to el eliminate or inhibit the growth of viruses and bacteria. So this is often why you see when people, um, like during flu season or something, They'll use essential oils and they either don't get sick or they just get back up at it again, like within two or three days. They start to recover a lot faster. So whether we're speaking about cleansing or purifying, uh, promoting cellular health, DNA integrity, supporting a healthy functioning nervous system, uh, reducing skin imperfections. Name any concern and you can bet that there is an oil for that. Like some of us walk around with t-shirts that say there is an oil for that. And truly there, for most of your concerns, there will be an oil that can support you. So let's look at different grades of essential oils because they are not created equally. Um, so if we look at this diagram here, the, I would say like, if we, if we rate it from like the lowest quality of oils to the highest quality of oils, if we would want to say it like that, we can start with synthetics. So these are oils that are used by the perfume industry or industrial industry. There might be some essential oils in there, but a lot of, um, companies will add in synthetically. Uh, synthetic compounds to um, get the aromatic benefit, but it's not necessarily focused on a therapeutic benefit. So the next um, grade would be food grade. So these are oils that are used in our in our food products. And if you've ever eaten like a chocolate bar with a mint flavor or anything like that, a lot of our food products have some essential oils in there. 
but again, it's not focused on therapeutic grade um, or therapeutic benefits. So the next grade would be therapeutic. And then the CPTG is actually the, the grade that doTERRA has created. So this is a certified pure therapeutic grade, um, which is like the beyond organic level, if you want to say it like that. So um, you don't want to use anything less than these pure therapeutic grade essential oils because they may not bring the desired results. And in some cases, they can actually be very toxic. So you want to really make sure that you check your sources and you look for any fillers and synthetic compounds. And I'll explain a little bit more about that um, throughout this webinar, and I'll give you some resources to really look deeper into this so that you can see what I mean with this. So our brand of, of essential oils really set the bar for purity and potency. They are sourced worldwide for their best quality. We'll get into that soon. They are free of any contaminants and pesticides, and they are subjected to rigorous testing to ensure their purity and potency. So why do I choose doTERRA? So doTERRA supports a global botanical network um, of artisans and growers to sustainably source and produce essential oils while stimulating local economies globally. So the CPTG essential oils um, are sourced from this global network of growers to ensure the most pure and effective essential oils. So they choose to source the essential oils indigenously but from the place where Mother Nature intended these plants to grow and to thrive. Um, so they're looking for the optimal soil conditions, humidity um, is prime, and the plant can be tended to by its community. So often these plants have been taken care of uh, generations after generations by these families that really know um, when these plants need to be planted or what's the right time of year, the right time of a month or a week or even during the day, what's the best time to harvest these plants? Um, the oils are sourced from over 40 different countries and more than half of these are developing countries. So we are also supporting, um, supporting local communities there to really help them have a sustainable income and have a better option for um, education for their children. We bring in infrastructure, so we're building hospitals and schools, um, which is remarkable. So it's a whole new market in these communities, and they are really in need of resources. We have many countries where um, people didn't have access to even to running water before doTERRA helped them um, by buying the oils or the plant material from them. There, there was no access to, to water, so just just to think in your daily life, how much of an effort it would be to go out and fetch your water two or three hours walking away from where you live and then get on with your task to generate an income. That's, that's massive. So instead of simply buying farms in the United States where the doTERRA headquarters are based, um, doTERRA partners directly with the farmers. So there's no middlemen. So it's a very honest collaboration. And they work with them long term. So they really um, want to make sure that these people can have a sustainable income. So even if a harvest goes wrong or there are certain plants that can only be harvested during a certain time of year, they will make sure that they get paid year round. So and these oils are very intensely tested for their standards of purity and potency. Um, if there is any issue, so if there are any uh, contaminants, if there's something maybe in the soil or in the water and it's not up to par, then doTERRA will not offer it for sale. Another part that I really love, um, this is so beautiful, I've gone to several events where some of the founders of doTERRA are present and just to hear them speak about how they got started with the company and how they are using their reach to help improve this world. So both through this um, botanical network that they've, they've set up. So we call this global co-impact co sourcing. So like I mentioned before, they're sourcing their oils from all around the world where the plants really thrive fast. So we can get, we can get a true therapeutic grade oil from it. Um, and we, we are supporting 
people locally it's it's so beautiful but it goes well beyond that so doTERRA has set up a not-for-profit organization called the Healing Hands Foundation and they they seek to bring healing and hope um, to people that might not have any options or any resources so um, some of our oils are sourced in Nepal like our beautiful wintergreen which is amazing if you have any kind of muscle aches after you work out too hard or you have some kind of neck issues um, after whiplash or anything like that. So the terror started sourcing um, wintergreen in Nepal a couple of months prior to the first earthquake hit over there. And because they were already on the ground, they were able to really um, get into action right away and they were able to use the money that they had collected through the Healing Hands Foundation to immediately start to build shelter for people and to start to build um, some of the first government approved um, earthquake proof schools that could also double as a community center. So if there would be a recurring, uh, recurring earthquake, they could all be safe there. They could be inside of the school and be together with their families and not lose um, their safety. So there's, there's a lot of different pro projects and partners that Notera works with, um, with their Healing Hands Foundation um, to support them globally. So there's some really beautiful partnerships with um, organizations that work with um, or to fight uh, sex trafficking for children. So it's not just in the United States, so that's a large focus of them. They also started to work with um, um, partners in, in Thailand and Cambodia which is near to my heart because I've traveled there and especially in Thailand, I've spent a lot of time. So it's so beautiful for me to see that it's, it's both based in North America, but also they're, they're broadening their reach and they're really trying to help these people, not just get them out of any kind of sex trade, but also help them with their recovery and work with them on funding their, their uh, creative therapies and, um, reintegrating them into society over there so it's it's remarkable to be part of that so both by me buying these oils and benefiting personally I'm also giving back to people world like around the world to make them have a better life so it's yeah it's astonishing so let's get into how we can use these oils safely I understand that when you first learn about essential oils, you might feel a little overwhelmed, like, all right, there's, there's so many different oils available. Where do I even get started? What are the ways I can use them? Can I hurt myself with this? These were some of the questions that I had when I first got started. So let's, let's walk through them. The first way that we can use essential oils is aromatically. This is just like the way that I described earlier when you're peeling that orange, the scent that you experience, you notice that there is an instant reaction that you're feeling maybe a little bit more uplifted or energized. That's, that's what citrus oils can do for you. They are invigorating. So using essential oils aromatically um, affects us emotionally, spiritually, and mentally. And there's, there's different ways that we can use them. So we could either diffuse them in a cold water diffuser. Um, I wouldn't recommend using one of those burners where you put some water and some oil on top and you put a little candle underneath because you will be damaging the oils. And when you're investing in these oils and you're using therapeutic grade oils, I wouldn't just want to burn them like that. So um, there's, there's a lot of different diffusers you can get. So go for a cold water uh, diffuser. Another simple way is just to inhale it either from the bottle or maybe put a drop in your hands and just rub your hands together and kind of cup them over your, your mouth and your nose and just gently inhale for at least, I would say three times to really notice an effect and also to, to be aware and um, conscious of your breathing. So smell is the fastest way to affect our mood, emotions, mental state, and memories. And by using oils aromatically, especially when we are diffusing the oils, they can really help to cleanse and purify um, the air and the energy around us. And you could even say, like, if you are looking at more of like the 
yogic or um, Taoist practices that they they bring in good chi or good prana into our environment. One of the tips that I wanted to give here, if there's any um, oils or scents that you've never experienced, especially when you are personally working on any kind of goal, or maybe you work with clients as a coach or nutritionist, um, there's this practice of anchoring that you might have heard um, heard of in uh, NLP. So you can use a certain oil, a certain scent, and anchor it to a positive affirmation or a goal that you really wish to um, to achieve or to attract towards you. So every time you would inhale this oil, it will remind you of this goal. It will bring you into this different mental state where you can actually feel receptive to receive. So I, I love doing that. I think it's beautiful, even how scent can bring us back to a whole different space where you might have had an experience like years ago and you you smell the scent again and you're like, whoa, I'm just being like transferred back there. So a little bit more about how this actually works. So you're inhaling the oil through your nose and the essential oils will hit the olfactory cells, so the nerves in your nasal cavity. There, the essential oil molecules will bind to receptor sites and the olfactory cells now send signals to the limbic area of your brain. So this area of your brain regulates um, your memory. It's the seat of emotions. It also will regulate um, some of your or have connection to some of your master glands that will um, regulate your hormones, your blood pressure, and your heart rate. And in turn, um, these oils can also um, elevate your endorphins and neurotransmitters. So just by inhaling an oil, you can have a very uh, huge effect on, on, your, on your mood, on bringing back memory, especially when you're um, perhaps doing some kind of hand massage with an older person that um, I know some, some of my friends do this. They go to houses for the elderly and they will do the aromatage hand uh, technique on people there and to notice how at times they will be more aware or they will get in touch with a very old memory and start sharing about that. It's a, it's a beautiful gift both to give that gift of touch but also that scent that brings them back to an experience that they have had that they weren't able to connect with anymore so all over it's beautiful um, some other ways to use the oils aromatically is by making a room spray so you don't necessarily have to buy a diffuser you can also buy a glass um, spray bottle and add the oils add some water you might want to add a little bit of like vodka or some um, grain alcohol just so that it uh, the scent sticks around a little bit longer, but it's not necessary per se. Um, another option, especially when you're kind of plugged up, you can add some of the essential oils to some uh, hot water or steaming water and place your head above it and maybe put a towel over your head and just like gently inhale the oils. Um, but the quickest way still is to just open a bottle and smell it straight from the bottle. So the second way to use the essential oils is topically. So this mainly has a physical effect. So we can either rub it directly on our skin. Um, we call this neat use. So it's just using the essential oils straight on our skin. Um, many of them can be used that way. It depends on your skin and how sensitive your skin is. There are some oils that are more considered warm oils. So they definitely have to be diluted but some people might notice that they have to dilute most of the oils. Um, so when you are diluting an oil, because they are fat soluble and not water soluble, you will want to use something like something fatty. So I like to use fractionated coconut oil because it's not very greasy and it absorbs very quickly, but you can use any oil that you like. So maybe your skin works really well with avocado oil or jojoba or name anything sweet almond I love. Um, you can also use a lotion if you prefer to do it that way. But don't use water because it's not going to do anything for you. It's the same when you accidentally rub something like peppermint oil into your eyes and it starts to burn like crazy. You don't want to add more water because it's going to make it worse. You want to add some coconut oil to dilute it. And you're not actually diluting the oil. You're actually spreading it out um, 
So some people are wondering why would I want to dilute if I can just use it straight? Won't it be better, especially when I'm when I'm in pain and I really want to have this localized effect, which is often what we're working with when we're using oils topically, right? There's there's a certain place where you are experiencing some pain or discomfort um, and you want to use the oil on that specific spot. But if we are diluting the oil, we're also locking it in deeper. So we are driving it deeper into to our tissue. Um, having said that, so when we're using essential oils, they are very potent, like I mentioned before. So less really is more. So I'd rather have you use less and do that more often than to use a whole lot of and like really overwhelm your system and only do that once a day. So spread out the times that you use it. The other thing I want you to be wary of is that you should not ever insert oils into your ear canal, into your eyes or into your nose. That's just not gonna go down well. Um, if you have any earache or anything like that, you can use um, some melaleuca oil um, at the back of the ears but don't ever stuff it in your ears, please. So some other ways to use the oils topically, you can see here, I'm a big fan of the uh, deep blue wrap that you can see on the right. It's a beautiful lotion when you um, are feeling, feeling tensed. If you've worked out really hard and your muscles are sore, a lot of people are finding relief when they have neck tension. Uh, for females, it's really nice when you're feeling very crampy around your period, you can rub it into your lower back. Um, some of the other products, so down below on the right, you can see the Touchline, which is um, some of our most popular um, oils, but they are pre-diluted, so they are safer to use with children and with elderly. Uh, you want to check the dilution, though, if you're using it for infants. Um, we have a beautiful spa line, so again, the essential oils are already infused into um, like our butter, body butter, our mud mask, uh, our scrub products like that. And the same goes for our um, face or skincare line. The third way to use essential oils is internally. So this will really give you more of a detoxifying and cleansing effect. Um, at first, when I first started using essential oils, I wasn't a big fan of using the oils internally because I wasn't really sure how safe it would be. So I really had to dig a little bit deeper and learn a little bit more for myself to see if I would feel comfortable using the oils internally. And so that, that's something that you really have to do for yourself and not just in terms of using the oils internally. Using essential oils is a very intuitive practice, I find, and it's really um, they really are a tool to bring you more in touch with your intuition as well. So there will be times that you are in love with a certain oil and then maybe at another time you'll notice, oh God, I cannot stand this scent, what's going on. So your body will tell you what you are in need of and when you are ready for it, both physically and emotionally. So when you are using the oils internally, you can either put like a drop under your tongue or sometimes people like to put a drop on their thumb and just press it against the roof of their mouth. Um, you can do this with frankincense oil, for example. So it has straight access into the brain um, and is absorbed really quickly that way. You can also use um, a drop or two. I would just use a drop in a glass of water. So there's people that like to take a drop of um, lemon in their water in the morning to cleanse their system. Another way is to swallow it in a, a veggie capsule or in a little beetlet. So they are like little pills you can either swallow or you can um, bite into them. I love these because they're great when you have a scratchy throat. You can bite into them and you can notice that it's, it's offering instant relief. So just be mindful. They can work as quite an intense cleanse. They are working like a detox. So start with a small amount and just notice how your body is responding and have have clarity on what is your intention on doing this. Only I only support using these certified pure therapeutic grade oils to use them internally. Um, they are guaranteed assurance that these oils are free from any synthetics and pesticides or bacteria and mold that you 
um, definitely don't want to ingest into your system. There are no clear um, FDA or depending where you are, Health Canada or in Europe, um, other regulations around what natural oils actually mean. So you can buy a bottle of essential oils and it will say 100% pure or natural, but it, it doesn't mean it actually is natural. It's, it's just odd system of greenwashing where we can put whatever you want on a bottle and there's no clear regulation. So dig a little deeper to really find out, okay, what is this company doing? Where are they sourcing their material? What kind of test results are they offering me to see if their oils are contaminated? Things like that. And it's, it's not always the case, but of course, when we look at the price quality um, combination, we can often see that it's worthwhile to, to maybe pay a little bit more. Um, there are some oils that definitely cannot be taken internally. So these mainly are wood oils, wintergreen and eucalyptus. Um, a way with doTERRA to find out if it's safe to use the oil internally is by just checking on the bottle. If there is one of these supplements label, supplement labels on the bottle, it, it's safe to use them internally. So other ways to use them internally. One of them that is amazing, and I know a lot of you really love, is to cook with essential oils. So you can... Um, add them to your dressings or maybe make really nice, amazing raw chocolates, which is what I love to do. Um, add it to your salt and really make nice, like herby salts. Um, add them to your, to your soups, to your curries. So many different ways we can get into that. And I, I think some of you would like me to do some kind of class or a webinar about cooking and baking with essential oils. So we can definitely get into that more. Uh, some of the other products that doTERRA offers are um, like little um, trout, drop, trout drops that you can use. Um, some of them are by the On Guard line. It's a collection that is very focused on um, supporting our immune system. So the same goes for those little beetlets. I like to use those internally. So when I have a scratchy throat, I will bite into them. Otherwise, I'll just swallow them. And if you don't want to add the oils to your water, or if you are using a higher like therapeutic dose, let's say if you're very ill or you're dealing with a lot of inflammation and you want to use some more essential oils internally, then put them in a veggie cap and use them that way. So let's, let's before we get into the specific oils that I want to talk about today, just some things to consider. So one of the factors that determines the purity and the therapeutic value of an oil is its makeup, the chemical constituents. So these can be affected by a lot of variables. So whether it's the parts of the plant from which the oil was produced, whether there was any fertilizer used, so it could be organic or chemical, condition of the soil, whether it's depleted or it's very nutrient rich, the climate, the altitude where the plant was grown, uh, the geographic region, like we might be able to get to grow lavender locally, but is it going to be therapeutic grade or do we have to find it somewhere else? What was the process used for distillation? What was the harvest method and the season that it was harvested? Was it optimal? So producing the purest kind of oils, taking all of this into consideration can be very costly, right? And it takes a lot of plant material, like sometimes hundreds or thousands of pounds of plant material to extract one pound of pure essential oil. And as most oils produced in the world are used by the perfume industry, they are often just purchased for their aromatic qualities. So the only thing that is focused on is, okay, do, do they smell quite nice? Yeah. But they aren't really treated optimally. So there might be a uh, use of very high temperatures, unneeded high pressure, chemical solvents, and very rapid processing to distill these oils so that a greater qu quantity of oil can be produced in the least amount of time. So it, it's all about how can we get as much as possible for as little money as, as is an option. Um, so the oils might smell pretty good and they cost a lot less, but they will lack most, if not all, of the chemical constituents needed to produce the expected therapeutic results. So these are kind of like your oils that you might find at your local supermarket, like your Target or your 
your Walmart and you're like, oh, this looks really nice. Like here's, here's a good set of essential oils and they, they smell okay. So but if you're going for scent, fine. But what else is added in and are they, very, are they actually offering your system any therapeutic results or are they an extra burden onto your system because of what was added to them? How often can you use essential oils? So we spoke about this a little bit before, um, that less is more. So for minor issues, a single use might be enough. Um, if the effect of the oil wears off after a period of time, you can simply use a little bit of the oil again. So it's, it's completely fine to use it every two to, two to three hours. If you are working with a very um, sudden um, issue, you might use it even more frequently. And you will notice when there's no need for it any longer. If you are dealing with more of a severe or chronic problem, then the best results are found by using several of the suggested oils at a time. So you will create some kind of protocol for yourself, and I can help you with that, to um, get into a structure of using the oils, like let's say two to four times a day. And this also would in include some of our supplements and things like that, just to get your system um, optimally working. Um, just like in herbal medicine or traditional Chinese medicine, it is often this synergy, so the combination of different plant essences that creates most of the potent um, medicine. So blend it up and keep in mind that less is more, right? It is more useful to apply a small amount more often than to just rub it all over your body and feel super overwhelmed. <laughs> Another thing is photosensitivity or phototoxicity. So all of the citrus oils increase our photosensitivity. That means that they will make our skin more sensitive to the sun. And so they contain constituents that um, make your skin more sensitive to UV light. And this can lead to anything from like a discoloration of your skin. Uh, you might burn a little bit more easily, or you might even blister. So if you are using any of these oils um, in the summertime, or if, if there's just like a stronger UV light, maybe use them somewhere where the sun does not shine, right? Use them on the soles of your feet or anywhere where you're covered by clothes. Um, not really gonna go into using oils during pregnancy and with infants. We can talk about that another time. If you have questions about that, you can check with a certified aromatherapist or your doctor or a certified herbalist um, just to see if it's right for you to use oils during your pregnancy and with your baby. Um, how to dilute them safely, and all of that. So why would you want to use essential oils? First of all, they are pure and natural. Like they are given to us by the earth. And doTERRA literally means gift of the earth. So it's, why not make use of that when it's so abundantly available to us? They are very effective and they are very cost effective. So most bottles, depending on if you are like a crazy user like myself, but I share a lot of oils as well. So I go through them a little faster because I love to spread the love. Um, but most bottles will last you about two years or more. And if you store them in, in a dark place away from direct sunlight, they will keep their, um, they will be effective for a long time. Um, also, essential oils come with really fun, unexpected, and positive side effects. So if you're using medication, you might have all these negative side effects that you will use some other medication for to get rid of, and you start to like add them on. But with essential oils, you might use the oil for a certain uh, concern or a certain uh, goal, and you'll realize, oh, it's, it's helped me with something else. It's also affected my mood or my emotions or my digestion or what else. Um, they are very easy to use by yourself and your family members. Often one drop is all that it takes. They have been used for centuries, um, both for health and wellness purposes, but also for culinary use. Um, and they, they help your body to get back to its neutral state of, of balance. So they allow your body to heal versus medication where um, a, med, a type of medicine might uh, inhibit some kind of pathway so that something doesn't happen, but then it's not supportive of 
actually bring you back into balance, right? So with doTERRA essential oils, you are optimally benefiting from an honest brand, which sources indigenously in the plant's natural habitat, and you're securing optimal therapeutic qualities. So this is the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about the 10 most popular oils. And again, I wish I could rub them onto you or just like, um, you know, have them go around the room. It's not really an option tonight, but I hope we can make it happen at some point for you. Um, so all of these oils that we're talking about are found in one of our most popular starter kits. And they're a great starting point for anyone to um, empower them in taking um, a more holistic approach to their lifestyle and their well-being. So we're going to start off with peppermint. And peppermint is a very um, invigorating and energizing oil, right? Actually, the entire plant is used and it's steam distilled. Um, it's very minty. It's a little bit hot. You, you kind of smell that when you're um, inhaling it. That's a little spicy. It comes from the United States and it is mainly supportive of your um, respiratory function and clear breathing. So I like to use it in the morning to give myself a bit of a boost or if I'm going to work out um, or even within my yoga practice just for pranayama. I will inhale some, so I will literally put a drop in between my hands, rub them together, inhale them, and I'll just feel that energy surge, and I'll feel my, um, my airways open up. Another great way to use it is for any kind of um, digestive support. So if you're suffering from bloating or gas or there's some indigestion, you might just want to rub it onto your belly or maybe just put some under your tongue or in some water. Um, Emotionally, it's a great oil for tension as well. So you might want to put a little bit on your temples or um, in, in the back of your, of your neck, you know, just to diffuse some of the tension and take away some of your sensation of fatigue or when you're a little bit low on energy. Interestingly enough, even though I'm sharing all of this, this is kind of what is average but there's people that will respond differently differently to an oil so you're still going to be biochemically unique so while some people are energized by peppermint other people will actually notice that it's really um soothing to them so it has more of an effect like lavender where they're like oh i'm going to use some peppermint to help me sleep which doesn't make sense to some of us but some of you it will be the best thing that ever happened to you so i, I just have to mention that um, this oil, oil can be used aromatically, topically, and internally. And you might just want to dilute it if you have very sensitive skin. And there's so much you can do with this. One of my favorite ways for food is probably to put it into chocolate <laughs> because it's just delicious. The next oil that we're going to talk about is lemon, also one of our most popular oils. Great for cleaning, like if there's any like really gross grease in your oven or on whatever blah, <laughs> in your sink or something it's it's so effective you just put some in a, in a bottle like a spray bottle with water spray it on leave it for a bit and you can just wipe it straight straight off um, for this oil we're using the rind so most of the oils are um, created by distillation but the citrus oils are uh, created by cold pressing them or expressing them. So this um, oil is very clean and fresh. It's very invigorating like all the other citrus oils. It's very uplifting and energizing. It can really help to, to cleanse both your physical system but also your, your surroundings. Um, also great for supporting respiratory function. And... How else do I use this oil? It's really nice in, in smoothies. Just add a little drop. Um, so it also it's safe to use aromatically, topically, and internally. You can use it neat without dilution depending on your skin. And it's, it's just a beautiful smell. I, I love to um, make blends with this oil as well. The next oil, for some, this is your favorite. For some of you, it's like, oh, I'm kind of over it. <laughs> So um, lavender 
we're using the flower and we're using steam distillation to get this beautiful floral scent. And for most people, this is one of the first oils that they will get introduced to, right? Like early on in life, even just, just the scent, like when you go to a yoga class and you get one of those eye pillows and there's lavender butts in there, just the sensation that you're noticing, you're feeling a lot less tense. So lavender is great for any kind of skin irritation or even if there's like a mosquito bite or you have a little burn, you can add it um, to your skin. It's safe to use without diluting, but it again depends on your skin sensitivity. Um, a lot of people will make um, a room spray with this, so they spray it on their pillows and their bedding before going to bed or add it to their diffuser. Another great way is to add it to some Epsom salts and really make a nice hot bath and just soak away all the stress. Also safe to use aromatically, topically, and internally. Um, a delicious recipe that one of my colleagues was raving about that she often makes is um, a lavender hot chocolate. If you are using the essential oils in that way, instead of adding a full drop, depending on the quantity that you're making, but let's say if you're just making a cup, don't add a full drop because it's going to taste like you are inhaling a garden. <laughs> Instead, use a toothpick and just um, swirl it around a little bit, like inside of the orifice reducer, and then add some to your drink. So you still get that therapeutic benefit and the beautiful flavor, but not that intensity. The next oil is oregano. So we're using the leaf and we're using steam distillation. And this is a super, super intense, strong essential oil. Um, I don't use it very often unless I'm feeling very sick. Like a couple of years ago, I was in India and I wasn't feeling all that great. So um, actually I had like diarrhea for like five weeks straight or something. <laughs> so I thought I was gonna die. And <laughs> so I figured I would try oregano and I just put it in some honey and even that way, just like ingesting it, it was so, so strong. So if it works for you, great. Maybe put it in like a little shot with some ginger and stuff. Um, one thing I would say, because it is so, um, what's the right word to say? It is so potent and so effective, but it's very strong and it's and antimicrobial or bacterial um, properties. So don't use it for too long. So don't just go use this every day. If you have some kind of issue, I would say don't use it longer than 10 days if you're gonna use it internally, because it can also really like um, bring your, your microflora out of balance, right? It can kill the good bacteria inside. So be intentional with how you're using this. Probably one of the best ways if you're using it internally is to put it in a veggie capsule. You might want to, you might notice you're still burping it up a little bit because it is that hot and strong, um, but it's an effective way to support your immune system on the short term. Um, yes, and then I would use it more in your surroundings as well for, for cleaning and purifying and adding it to some blends. Definitely dilute it if you are going to use it topically in any way because it's a very hot oil, it will burn. Um, one other way that I have used this is for skin tags. So I don't get these often. I think I only had one once and it was kind of under my arm, like below my armpit. And I wasn't sure like what it was. I never had one before. And I was like, what am I gonna do with this? So I was researching and I found that oregano might help. So I put some on the skin tag and I don't think I properly diluted it, like I think, Maybe some of the oil kind of went below the spot that I was putting it on. So it kind of burned. But I was like, okay, whatever. So I went to bed. And then the next morning I checked it. So the entire skin had kind of shriveled and turned black. And then shortly after it just fell off. So if you are dealing with skin tags, then this is a great solution for you to try out. Um, some people like to use this oil in cooking as well. Um, again, it's very potent. So Again, use the toothpick and play with that. Maybe it's also nice for making dressings. Um, just find a proper ratio, or otherwise you'll be very overwhelmed in its, in its flavor palette. The next oil we'll talk about is Melaleuca, which is also known as tea tree. It's another oil that a lot of you will have experienced, whether it is in your shampoo or in some of your, um, your facial cleansers, things like that. So this is um, 
a beautiful plant from um, Australia. We're using the leaf and we're distilling it through steam distillation. Um, I love this scent mainly because um, I'm, I'm very keen on learning more about the emotional component of the oils. So if, if you dig that, then I will definitely do a webinar just solely on that because it's, it's so interesting. Um, but Melaleuca or tea tree oil is the oil of healthy boundaries. So if you feel that you often let in other people's energy just too much or you struggle with, with saying no, you know, this is a great oil to use. So I like to put a drop either uh, just on the top of my head or I just put it like a little bit on my chest or on my third eye and I can just smell that and it just instantly makes me feel more in my power and more strong. Um, one of the, um, I would say, the benefits that it's most well known for is um, the benefits for, for your skin, especially when there's any kind of impurities or if you're suffering with acne, um, can be very cleansing and very rejuvenating. This oil can also really um, support your immune uh, function and help you protect against any kind of seasonal threats. Also safe to use aromatically, topically, and internally, and you can use it neat. Um, I have pretty sensitive skin, but I haven't had any issues using it that way. But if you're wanting to like, drive it deeper into your tissue, still smart to um, dilute it that way. Next oil is frankincense, which is such such a beautiful oil. I'll tell you, I, I was um, at, a, at an event on Friday, and there was a girl who came up to me, and she said, oh my God, I love these oils. Frankincense is my favorite. It's so amazing. Sometimes I get sick of the other ones, but this one is just so good. Like I just came back from like a two hour Ashtanga class and I just have to put, like I put a little bit of frankincense like on my forehead and my energy just drops and I'm, I'm all good, you know? So this is a beautiful oil for meditation to really ground yourself a bit more. It's um, sourced from Somalia. It comes from the resin from the Boswellia tree. So it's, it's pretty hard to, um, to harvest because men have to climb onto these rocks to get, to get the resin from the trees. So it's pretty dangerous. So this is one of our more pricier oils because of that. Also, we are really making sure that they are harvested in a way that the trees are, um, that it's sustainable so that we're not just using everything up and there's nothing left. So sometimes we have to take a break from sourcing just to let the trees recover, if that makes sense. Um, this oil is kind of known as the king of oils. So if you don't know what oil to go for, then just use frankincense. That's what we like to say. Um, it's great to put some on your thumb and just press it against the roof of your mouth if you're feeling a little bit anxious or overwhelmed. It helps a lot. Um, emotionally, this is known as the oil of truth. So if um, if you are using it for a meditation, it can really help you to tap into your intuition. Um, it's also a great supporter for neurological health and for cellular function. So you can use it in that way internally. Um, and then it's great for your skin. So if you have any blemishes, any um, scarring going on, any stretch marks, rub it in. It's amazing. The next oil is a blend. It's called Digest Zen. Uh, depending where you are, some other parts of the world, it might be called Zen Jess. Um, I love this oil. It's one of my favorites. I use it a lot, especially when I'm feeling a little bit bloated or I just feel stressed and I notice that my food isn't really going down so well. So this is a combination of uh, ginger, peppermint, caraway, coriander, anise, tarragon, and fennel seed. Um, it is, it's a beautiful combination. It's kind of spicy, but it also has that sweetness with the minty and the licorice. <laughs> um, I love it. If you, if you are feeling like really bloated and you're not sure like how you're going to fit into your pants or what you're going to do, rub some on your belly and you'll be farting it all out within like 15 minutes and you'll feel so much better. So I like to use this topically. I just rub it onto my belly and I might dilute it a bit just to have it stick around for a bit longer. You could use this to your water or your tea as well. 
Um, so like I said, it helps with reduced bloating, gas, and indigestion. And especially around like any kind of like family situations where, where there is a lot of stress, you know, like the holidays, and you know you're going to eat a little bit heavier, just have this ready on the go and use it and offer it to other people. Be, be a nice person and they will love you for it, right? Um, the next oil is called Deep Blue. This is our soothing blend. It's beautiful. It's quite intense. So you have to make sure that you're not using this, like slobbing it all over yourself because you think it's going to feel so good. Like really use it locally where there is um, any kind of pain or any kind of issue. Um, so it's a combination of wintergreen. That's our beautiful oil from Nepal. Uh, comfort, peppermint, ilang-ilang, helichrysum, blue tansy, blue chamomile, and osmanthus. Um, it's, it's quite intense, but in a very beautiful, like very soothing way, I find personally. So you can use this um, before or after you work out. Most people use it after they work out, but if you want to like kind of be proactive, put it on before. It's really nice for a soothing massage if you've been like um, on your feet all day, like if you're a server, a waitress. Um, if there's any kind of inflammation, like if you have knee pain, like anything with like arthritis, things like that. Um, I also like to use this, like I mentioned, like in the rub uh, version, so it's just as a lotion for um, period cramps. You cannot use this one internally, but it's great for topical use. Um, you can kind of have a bit of a heavier response, like if your skin is very sensitive. So I would dilute it. Also great for growing pains for kids, by the way. This next oil is also a blend. And this is one of the oils that has helped me a lot when I first got introduced to doTERRA. Um, I remember going to an event to learn more about the oils and the business opportunity. And I was feeling very ill. <laughs> it was super, super stuffed and I wasn't able to talk and I just felt very off. And um, I was given a little bottle of this and it helped me so much. Like I know that I said before, don't put it in your notes. And I didn't put it in my notes, but I put it right on there. And it just helped me so much to get some of that junk out and get things like clear again. So it's um, a blend made out of laurel leaf peppermint, eucalyptus, melaleuca, lemon, raven sarah, and cardamom. And it's a beautiful mix of like a minty, fresh, airy, hot combination. Um, if you are familiar with like vapor wrap, it kind of has the same scents uh, or scent, but it doesn't have any of the nasty ingredients. So you can apply this topically to your chest and just notice that it will have this cooling of effect on you and it will give you more space to breathe. It will help to like um, open things up again for you. It also is supportive like proactively to minimize the effects of seasonal threats. Um, and we sell this like in, in different forms as well. So there's um, little throat drops that you can chew on to help support like if there's any throat um, issues when you're not feeling well. Um, there's also a rub you can use for kids to put it on, your, on their chest as well. Again, not to use internally, but you can use this aromatically and topically. Um, if you are suffering with asthma or anything like that, you can diffuse this, diffuse this overnight. That's a really great option for you. And then we have On Guard. This is our protective blend. So you know what it's gonna do emotionally, right? but um, let's talk about physically as well. So it's a beautiful combination of um, wild orange, clove, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary. It's, it's warm and spicy and a little woody. And it, um, it's kind of like a little like, like Christmas in a bottle in a way, especially with the clove that's often what people pick up on first. So this is a very good and effective alternative to any synthetic options for immune support. Um, it will help your body to um, fight against, um, or it will support the antioxidant defenses. And it also supports a healthy respiratory function. I love to diffuse this if I notice that I'm on the verge of, of getting sick. And often I will combine it with um, 
one of our like citrusy blends, like a citrus bliss, just to make it a little less strong, but still enjoy its benefits. Another way that I often use this is just to put it on the soles of my feet uh, because then I don't smell it that intensely, especially when I'm using it during the day. And I use those little beetlets that I showed you earlier. So I bite into them or I swallow them. Uh, So it's safe to use internally as well. And on guard is actually the um, main ingredient of a large, um, larger collection of products that I absolutely adore. Um, so it comes as the oil and it's the beetlets, but then there's also these soft gels. So they are just like veggie caps that you can use internally with a bit of a larger amount to really kick things in the bud. Um, the touch that you can see is just a pre-diluted version. So it's safe to use for kids and for the elderly and just as a diluted version. So it's easy to put it um, on the soles of your feet, for example. Then we have a cleaner concentrate. So you can start to take some inventory of the products that you're generally using in your household and maybe start to um, replace some of these products with cleaner products, you know, the same with like your hand wash and your laundry detergents or or your, um, your toothpaste. And funny story, my mom was here um, staying with me last weekend and she's like, well, your, your teeth look really good. Like they look a lot whiter like what have you been doing so I was thinking about what changes I made and I was like well I'm like using this bamboo toothbrush but I don't know if that's gonna really have some kind of impact and I'm eating a lot less like sugary foods which will have some kind of impact but I think the main thing is that I changed over my toothpaste to this doTERRA toothpaste um, like six months ago or so and it, it feels great it tastes great and it's whitening so um then there's the protecting throat drops and there's also um that's just another picture of the hand wash which is amazing to have if you have those foaming dispensers it'll make your whole house smell like christmas and everyone will be asking you how they can get some of that um so i know this is a lot of information and often people will be like okay i don't know where to start with this like this is really overwhelming you're giving a lot of different suggestions, but how do I move from overwhelm back into taking some kind of, or having a sense of empowerment around the steps that I can take? So I would say that the most important thing in your life is still to surround yourself with uplifting people and to seek support, right? So that's the biggest thing. Like we can eat like crap and (laughs) not really exercise, but if we are around people that inspire us and uplift us we will move along in that vibration so even if you find yourself in a space and i've been there before where you're feeling lethargic or depressed or you're just alone you're in an environment where you don't know a lot of people find some podcast and things like that that you that you really enjoy and in that way you'll notice you are supported by people right? You, you still have like-minded people around you, even though they're just talking to, to you through your phone, through your earphones, um, they, they are your uplifters. So there's, there's always an option to get into a different vibration, which is going to impact your thoughts, your beliefs, your actions. And that, that's the whole start. The other thing is like grabbing it from like the root and that's your, your food. What are you ingesting? How are you eating it? So focus on whole foods. And if you're able to afford it, get organic foods, you know, support your local farmers, flirt with them and get in the best nutrition that you can pack in. The next step is integrate essential oils into your lifestyle. They are so effective and beautiful and remarkable. And then dedicate yourself to learn as much as possible. Be an informed consumer, right? So you can support yourself and your household, and your friends, and your family, and you don't feel so dependent on other people, or doctors, or anything like that, and I was reading an article yesterday in the newspaper how a lot more people are kind of self-diagnosing these days, and if that was a good or a bad thing, and it wasn't really considered either, it at times was helpful for the doctor to have a more informed consumer or customer, I mean, um, opposite of them so they could say hey I think this is what's going on and they would be able to tailor in more or focus in more 
into what they were bringing to them, you know, and sometimes they would even know, oh, I don't think, I, I think this cough is going to go over by it itself or I have a solution for that. So I don't have to go see the doctor. It takes off some of the load of the doctors as well so that they can deal with people with more severe issues. I'm not saying that if you think something's wrong, that you shouldn't go to your doctor because it's still a smart thing to do. So how do you get started with essential oils? Um, the terra oils are not sold in stores. Um, the main reason for that is that um, we want people to really be educated well and supported on how to use them safely. So that's why there are people like myself that will share them with people and educate them and support them throughout their journey, right? So we'll be here for you when you have any personal questions and you want to create like um, a protocol for yourself to really work on some goals, whether that is physically or emotionally or on some other level. So to get started with your oils, um, join our community. We have an amazing global community. Um, it's called Find a Home Within. That's the name of my business. Um, I think I started using that name when I was um, in Thailand and I was noticing that, wow, I didn't really need other people that much anymore. Not in the way that I didn't enjoy being around people, but I didn't need their validation as much. I felt like more secure in myself and I felt that I was able to hold up myself more. And the, the sense that I found was that I had found a home within myself that I could rest in and be myself in. So that's really what I, what I would like for you if you don't have that yet or if you want to join us in our journey towards that home within and sit with us, then you are so welcome. So the way to do that is you purchase um, a starter kit. There's many different options and I'm happy to sit down with you and go over them to really find something that suits you both financially, uh, physically and emotionally so we can really tailor it to you. And all of these starter kits include a one-year membership. So they give you 25% off of any of your future purchases. You don't have to buy again, but if you do, then you get a steep discount. Another benefit of starting out with a kit is that you, um, your membership fee will be waived. And because the most popular oils are pieced together, you get a steeper discount on these kits as well. So... A huge benefit I find is I have replaced a lot of products that I was using before that maybe weren't as um, as clean or as good for our environment by doTERRA products, right? So some of my skincare products and my, um, like I said, my toothpaste and my uh, laundry detergent and my soaps and things like that. So I can shop whenever it's efficient for me. And all of these oils and goodies, they will show up on my doorstep. So it feels like Christmas because sometimes I forget what I've ordered <laughs> and then I'll, I'll get to unpack it and be like, Oh my God, I'm so happy. I got this. Um, another option is to participate in our monthly ordering rewards program. So you can earn free pod products um, and you can get your shipping back in product points. So for me, whenever I order, I get 30% back in free points plus my shipping. So that means that I, have these free products, uh, product points to use towards any products of my choosing. Sometimes there's an oil that is more expensive that I might not have ordered by myself. Um, but now that I have these points, I'm like, I'm actually really curious to see um, what is Melissa like? You know, it's one of the most expensive but most beautiful oils or um, name anything, just even getting an extra bottle of frankincense which is so, so, so beautiful and so sacred and delicious. Um, I use my oils towards that. Or if there's maybe a friend or a family member that is not doing well and doesn't have the financial ability to get oils, I will use those uh, points to get oils for them. Another benefit of joining our community is that you will receive ongoing support and education from both myself and from my team. So there's some amazing people that, share very specifically about um, the topics that they have huge knowledge around. So it could be anything from um, emotional well-being, which includes like tapping, or maybe they are like master blenders. They really know how to make incredible blends. You know, I'm not that knowledgeable about that yet, but again, there's so much to learn. It's so interesting. Um, 
I also have some programs that I offer frequently, which are really fun that are like seasonally inspired. I'd love for you to join in on that. Everyone receives a wellness consult if they want to really dig a little bit deeper and map out a plan. And if you are interested in sharing oils with others, there's also the option for business mentoring as well, which is so cool. <laughs> I love doing that. Um, some resources that are useful. Um, so one of the websites that doTERRA created is called source to you. Um, this is really helpful. I re remember before that I said, make sure to check how a company shows you their um, research and what is in their products, like how are they testing their products. So on the bottom of every doTERRA bottle, there will be a code that you can insert on the source to you website, and it will give you an entire report of the exact um, chemical makeup of the oil. So you can see that it is completely pure. There's no, um, no additives. There's nothing that's impure about it. And if there would be, then it would not be on the market. Then doTERRA will pull it. So you can see exactly what is in there for that batch. Another great website is Aromatic Science. Um, doTERRA is a business that is rooted in science. So for those of you that um, sometimes feel that this stuff is a little bit too woo-woo, um, there's so much information both on the doTERRA blog and on this website where you can really geek out and really like look more at the um, the chemical makeup and a lot of research that's being done right now, um, some papers that are being published in, in uh, scientific journals. So that's amazing. Um, another way for yourself, if you are feeling either uh, you need some inspiration on how to use oils or you're feeling overwhelmed and you need a starting point, there's an app called the Daily Drop app, which is created by doTERRA as well. You can just... Um, download it on your phone and you will get um, some kind of inspiration every day to use. Another book that I use frequently is called the Modern Essentials book, um, especially if you are um, dealing with a more severe health um, issue or if you are seeing clients as a nutritionist or um, a coach, this might be of interest to you because it has a lot of different protocols in there as well that you can use with people. And then one of my favorite books is called um, Emotions and Essential Oils. So that really is um, a reference guide that explains a lot more about the emotional connection with the oils and how you can use them. And I often will refer to this when I'm um, um, creating like a yoga class around a certain oil when we're working with like, let's say, um, body awareness or body um, positivity. We can really work with specific oils that will speak to that. Um, or even when I'm noticing that I'm feeling very pulled towards a certain oil, I will look up what, it, um, what its emotional connection is and I'll realize, like, well, that's just a theme that I'm working on and I didn't realize that my body knew so well what oil it needed to work through that. So um, as I am recording this and I will make this available to other people, um, I will keep this a little bit more generic, but there are monthly specials on my website. So if you go to um, www.sarahlolomon.com, you'll be able to go to the tab monthly specials and see what is the special for this month. Uh, so sometimes it's a larger promotion where you can get a free oil or free products. Sometimes it's like this month where you can get a hundred dollar rebates towards any products of your choosing, which is a great, great deal when you're just getting started to really start to build your collection. Um, so if you have any questions, if you'd like to get some more personalized advice because you're dealing with a certain um, health uh, issue or maybe you have some wellness goals um, or something that you're working through emotionally and you'd like to map out a plan for that or you're curious about what other oils are out there, what options do you have, please send me an email and we'll um, hop on a call together and I'll, I'd love to help you out. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, I apologize for starting this off so late. Um, I guess that's kind of like a Murphy's Law or something with webinars. Sometimes things don't really work out, but in the end, we made it happen. So thank you so much for your presence, and I'd love to see you on the next one. Please shoot me a message as well if there's any topics you'd like to learn about. Um, I will stop the recording, and then I'll see um, if you have any questions.
if I can figure out how to do it. <laughs> um, let's see. 